After placing second at the 2022 Six Invitational and being a stable, prominent staple of the European Rainbow Six scene for nearly three years, Team Empire today have released Joysick, Shepard, Dan, and Always, and replaced them with Exodus, Andreezy, WTG, and Amician. I really wish this was an early April Fool's joke, but it's not. This is the reality that we now live in, but... I refuse to accept it. This is, on the surface, the single dumbest thing that could have happened to any team in the offseason aside from the current world champions. Memes about TSM beating them at the Invitational aside, the majority of the runners-up of the most recent world championship will not be competing in Rainbow Six for the start of the next season. And there are a few factors at play in this. The first thing to note is Scyther being the only player from the original Empire squad not being replaced. This is a suggestion of internal strife between him and the rest of the team, leading to rumors during the Invitational that this was his last ride with the rest of Empire's core. And turns out it was, but I didn't think it was going to happen this way. My expectation was that he would get dropped and the team would find a new fifth post SI, but this has transformed into something far more dire. The second factor is Zeka being removed as head coach of the team and Razor being moved back in which apparently appears to have created a drastic fundamental difference in philosophy between the four players and the handling of the team by the organization. Joystick did a stream right after the announcement where he clarified a couple crucial points. The four players want to stick together, and they didn't want to play without Jekka, but the decision to promote Razor back to head coach was instead made by the organization. Organization wants to swap our coach, and they wants to kick him. And we say that we we don't play we don't want to play without Jack, and we our path just. Uh... So there's already enough reason to justify a rift forming internally, but to me it seems very unlikely that this is the full extent of the problem. There must be some other political, contractual, or personal difference behind the scenes that forced this decision to be made, whether from the org side or from the player side to leave. And ultimately, it's hard to know exactly who to blame. Other than the situation looking batshit crazy because it is, Empire can reasonably be blamed for failing to listen to the wants and needs of their players by forcing in a coach that the players didn't want, but the players are the ones who are responsible for choosing not to continue with the org. They knew that they'd be sacrificing their ability to play in the EU well if they made a choice like this. Even if they were to get picked up by another org, they can't go back into the European League because it's only 10 teams big, and because we're due to start that league very soon, there's no chance that it's going to be up to 11 or 12 teams with so little time left before we kick it off. Off. Perhaps they could still play in the Russian Major League, but those four guys are essentially locked out of the league for stage one at minimum, something that Joystick also confirmed on stream. So there is no orc picking up you four? No. We are skipping the first stage of you. But I think we will stick together as a team. The only way that these guys will be able to get back into the European League is by siding with one of its existing orcs, because this is what happens when you have an, a, a, what, a semi-franchise league? What are we calling it? But I'll be honest, unless one of those teams sucks like Beast Coast did last year, and the only option they see is picking these guys up, the likelihood of any of them dropping their roster to pick up the Russians is rather low. I could be grossly underestimating how ready some of these EUL teams might be to drop their roster for the second best team in the world, by the way, but you at least see what the struggle is. Unfortunately for them, their fastest route back into the league might be splitting up and signing to separate teams once the next transfer window opens in May. But that's if they were to split up. If they wanted to completely stick together, the four of them could avoid that route entirely if they were to pick up a new fifth, I, I hear Karzekas without a team, that'd be interesting. Qualify for the Russian Major League, get into Challenger League, and then win relegations to get back into the EU well the hard way. Kind of similar to what Parabellum did last year. But that's a process that would take an entire year to accomplish. They would absolutely run the fucking table on everyone there. Like, they would smash everybody. But, again, they were runners-up at SI. This isn't the fate that they ultimately deserve. So again, Org and the team are at odds resulting in this split. Empire's new team consists of ex Virtus Pro and Hellraiser's players along with Scyther, but the team doesn't carry anything close to the same legacy as the team they just replaced does. And ultimately, there is absolutely nothing to suggest that they will be anywhere close to the Empire that just made the Grand Finals at SI. The only way that this change genuinely makes sense from a player perspective is if they were to start winning everything under the sun come Stage 1 and beyond of this next season. Everything else other than that is just going to make this look like the single worst roster move that Rainbow Six has ever seen. I know that there have been other announcements made throughout the Siege Esports ecosystem today, but this one deserves its own coverage for how drastic and incredulous it is that we're living in this timeline right now. I do hope that those dropped players are able to find new homes in the near future, because they sure as hell deserve it. 
not this banishment. That's all from me. I did read some of the comments that you guys left on that YouTube community post I put up regarding Empire's release, and I know that you're going to have even more thoughts about what this transfer and change looks like going forward, so please drop them in the comments. Um, this is one of the... yeah, this just sucks. I wish I really knew what to say, but at this point I don't really know what to say. So, sorry for the lack of memes, but do follow the Twitter, the Twitch, and YouTube, and all that jazz. And uh, yeah, we'll be back with more Roster Mania stuff soon. Take care.